Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arehato Sama Sambudhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arehato Sama Sambudhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arehato Sama Sambudhasa Sadhu 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 Let us first pay respect to our teacher. Most terrible, Kiribat Guru Nyanana Nutero, King Atlokusam in Hase, for teaching us this precious Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Meritorious uh, devotees, okay. This is a program like we had to stop for a while, and now we are going to again. Resume the program from beginning from this day onwards. So this will be a weekly program as it was even before. So you can participate weekly and we will learn suttas, the discourses, the original discourses from the can Pali Canon, the teachings of the Buddha. So that you can on your own according to your wisdom, incorporate these teachings to your life. The more successful you are in doing that, the more benefit you will reap in this life and also in your next life. And more happy you will be because happiness is something everyone crave for. Everyone desire in life. That is the nature of all humans, all beings. They crave for happiness and they despise suffering. But true happiness can only be achieved through the teachings of the Buddha. Any other form of happiness you may experience from time to time in life is temporary, is fleeting, it's not everlasting. So this life is a bundle of suffering, but uh, on the face of it, it feels like there's happiness. But the truth is, there's way more suffering in life than happiness. So, Buddha saw this reality because he saw not only this life, he saw every life in our journey in this sansar, all the past life. If, it, if Buddha did not teach us, tell us, that in our sansaric journey, we were again and again born in the ghost worlds, the hell worlds, as animals. We would know. There is no way for us to know these things. And we might think like, okay, it's not that bad to be reborn as a human. But that is not the case. There are... Because even in the human world, you can see how people suffer. In your case, you might be well off, better off than another person living in some other place. But still, there's so much of suffering in this life, this world. And compare that to the suffering, the animal world, the animals experience. Because when we suffer, we can share that suffering, we can talk to a person. Or at least we can convey what we feel and ask for help. 
do animals have that ability are they skilled do they have the know how the intelligence to alleviate their suffering no think of simple things if it's like if it is raining we can just we have the umbrella something we came up with no are animals capable of doing this for themselves coming up with things to follow on their life when they get sick like us no there's so much suffering even more so in the ghost world and the hell worlds so buddha saw this reality and he, that is why he always urged us to practice the noble eightfold path because that is the only solution there is no other solution to be free from this woeful sansaric journey so now this period in life like what we experience throughout the world the pandemic so everyone suffering because of the pandemic and we think okay this may pass no one thought this would like drag along for this long and everyone waited for a vaccine and a solution that would for once and for all cure or subside the pandemic but that's not seem to be happening because even in the past this history if you say that for years sometimes these pandemics have gone on millions have died you might have heard about black death the plague that claimed many lives so likewise this is something you come across time and again in the world these things are there so it is something we have to learn to cope with so as long as we are born we have to suffer in this way so only the buddhas find a permanent solution to this suffering by ending rebirth there's no more suffering so we suffer because we are born no? that is the reason for suffering no? so if you are not born then you will not suffer it's that simple but still so profound to understand to see the dependent origination the nature by which we are again and again reborn so anyhow uh, because we all suffer as a whole due to the pandemic i thought we would discuss a sutta that uh, i think you may all have heard and are familiar the ratan sutta because buddha taught the ratan sutta uh, in similar circumstances actually even in more grave circumstances to alleviate uh, three calamities actually suffered uh, by the kingdom of vesali at the time of the buddha this happened so i thought it would be nice to learn of this sutta in detail so that you understand how profound this teach in this discourse the ratan sutta is because uh, for many decades like many years thousands of years this has served a purpose to bring blessings to bring happiness to alleviate suffering illness disease to beings of the world since buddha first taught the ratan sutta there are records in the mahavans the great chronic chronic chronicle in sri lanka there's the book where it records the history in sri lanka it is recorded there even in the time of king upatis as i remember there was a famine and plague in the country and many died they had no solution but then the king got together the sangha and together with the sangha they chanted the ratan sutta and uh, they did this throughout throughout the night so all around the clock for one day they chanted the ratan sutta and come next day 
there was huge downpour of rain and the famine and and the plague both subsided people recovered from the plague and the famine subsided just like that the power of the ratan sutra so likewise even in the past even in sri lanka people have benefited greatly from chanting the ratan sutra so there is so much power behind the sutra and there is a reason for that so we can learn that when we study the sutra today so there is a background we'll first discuss uh, what uh, uh, what is the reason buddha actually chant the ratan sutra the background story so this uh, kingdom of the lichavis was a confederate that means it was ruled by many kings the lichavi princes actually so there are many kings not one so it was a confederate and very uh, flourishing like it was a very prosperous kingdom the kingdom of lichavi but uh, as it is the nature of the world then suddenly first uh, there was a drought and all the crops failed and there was a famine so when you don't have food then you you get weak and your immune system breaks down then you easily get sick and so you know people got sick and the disease spread and people began to die in hundreds in thousands and when the body is piled up and then because of the stench of the decaying bodies then non humans also that is evil spirits came into the kingdom so in this way now there are three calamities there is the famine the plague or the disease and the influence the attack of the evil spirits and there were no solution for years they could not come up with a solution they did all they could they were, the people went to their kings and asked like save us help us for 12 years they suffered 12 long years they suffered not one like no two like just as we have suffered for 12 years people died new years so then in the end they decided okay the only solution for this may be there is the buddha in rajagaha and he is known for his uh, supreme powers his majesty and his capabilities his uh, virtues is well known to everyone maybe if we go and ask the blessed one to come here to our kingdom then there might be some respite maybe he can help us so they sent two envoys then they discussed the king said oh, okay it's true that he is over there but at the moment king bimbisar is attending to buddha so one day if he would give permission like would he like the idea of us uh, inviting the buddha here so they sent two envoys with a lot of gifts uh, to king bimbisar and told look we are suffering because of these three calamities would it be okay if we invited the buddha to our kingdom so that uh, we can save ourselves save our kingdom so then kim bimisara say it's not up to me i can't uh, reply for the buddha you have to go ask him you would have to go to the buddha and invite yourself it's the decision is up to the blessed one not me i can't talk for him so they went to the buddha and invited the buddha when the buddha one the blessed one please come to our kingdom and help us overcome this disaster 
So that moment Buddha contemplated and with this divine vision, divine eye, he saw that once he go to Vesali and chant the Ratana Sutta, then these three calamities will subside. Not only that, 84,000, the first time we chant the Sutta alone, 84,000 people would realize the teachings would attain the fruits of the path and the power of this sutta would pervade to many. It is said hundreds of thousands of million galaxies. The power of the Ratana Sutta will pervade to such a great expanse. So seeing all this, Buddha said, it is worthy of me to go there. So he consented in silence. That is how the Buddha's consent. There are cases when people go to the Buddha and invite him to alms givings. Then also what the Buddha does is he, if he's silent, that means he's agreeing. So in this way, the Buddha consented. So then they left. Then Kim Bimbisara approached the Buddha and said, Buddha, what did you say? What did you tell the Lichavis, princess? The Buddha said, I agreed. Okay, then if you are going to leave to Vesali, let me first prepare the road leading up to the river Ganges. Because if you are if if you have to travel to the kingdom of Vesali, you had to first go to the bank of the river Ganges, then you had to cross over. And then on the other side is the kingdom of Vesali. So from Rajagaha to the bank of the river Ganges, the length is five ojanas. Okay. So, so this distance, the king decorated. How? He first make it even, the ground even, cleared all the debris, weeds or whatever, then he put white sand, covered the whole road with white sand. And it is said he decorated uh, the sides of the road with banners and uh, various things, various decorations, flags. And also it is said he offered flowers to the Buddha knee deep. That much of flowers was covered to knee deep in five colors. And then from, for like there were five yojanas, each yojana, there was a shelter where Buddha and the monks would, would rest for the day. And there he would offer dana to the monks because Buddha didn't come alone. He came with uh, 500 monks. So in this way, each day they would travel one yojana and rest at the resting place, they are the king would attend to the Sangha and give them dana and all other attend to their needs. Likewise, for five in five days, they arrived amidst many festivities in a road decorated in a heavenly way, strewn with flowers, knee deep. So they came near the bank of the river Ganges. They arrived there. And then because the Ganges river is very wide, not the sort of rivers that we normally see. So I think it is said they prepare two ships, like ships are huge. So that's how it says in the commentary, maybe huge yard. So we don't know. It says ships, like they prepare two ships. And by connecting two ships they created the platform and on that platform they placed a golden chair a special seat prepared for the buddha so buddha would sit there and the monks would sit around him and it is said uh, the river ganges also was filled with flowers of five colors in reverence to the Buddha. And the distance, they, they covered a distance of 
one yojana means the sips and uh, before they were going to leave from this side of the river they sent a message to Vesali okay Buddha is about to come to your kingdom so prepare to receive him so the Lichavi princess they thought okay if we are, they, they heard that in this and this way, the Kim Vibhisar had paid respect to the Buddha, then we should do double that. So they did the same decorations, but even more, twice as more. To, because there was the distance of, again, three originals from the river bank to the kingdom of Vesari. And when Buddha came, the, uh, also I forgot to say that Kim Bimbisara held white parasols above the head of the Buddha. Two white parasols. And for each monk, there would be another white parasol over the, to, over the, for their shade. And in this case, because they wanted to do twice as more, the Lichavis arranged to, have, arranged to hold four parasols, white parasols over the Buddha and two over each monk. And all the other de decorations, flags, banners, and all that twice as more. So then in three days, Buddha covered the rest of the di distance. Like when Buddha came from the ship, the moment he stepped, the first step, he placed his foot in the kingdom of Vesali. Then and there, at that very moment, there was the torrential rain a heavy downpour of rain. It's a divine rain. It's a special rain. Where in that case, normally when you rain, when it rains, everyone is drenched in the rain. But in this case, only those who want to, want to be in the rain, like want to get wet, would get wet. If you don't, if you are not willing to get wet, then you will not be affected by the rain. So it's a special kind of divine rain. And because of this torrential downpour, all the dead bodies, the carcasses, and all other filthy things that were in there, in the kingdom, they were all washed out to the river Ganges. And the whole of the kingdom was clean. And uh, when Buddha, with the entourage of monks, arrived, in the kingdom of Vesali, it's the capital of the Lichavi kingdom in the city of Vesali. So it is said in the Kevada Sutta, as I remember, when Buddha goes to a certain place, a village, for a distance of seven gauvas, the non humans, the evil pits, cannot be there because of the great virtues of the Buddha. So they all fled. And also, Witnessing the arrival of the Buddha, God Sakka, along with many, a multitude of devas, arrived to pay homage to the Buddha. So, because of the power of the devas, also, the non humans, the evil spirits, fled the city of Vesali. And then, Buddha, when he Upon arriving at the gate, the city gates, he took water into his arms bowl. And that is when he first chanted the Ratana Sutta. Then having chanted the Ratana Sutta, he gave his arms bowl, now filled with water that has been uh, chanted the Paritta. So it has that power of the Paritta. So Paritta means protection. So then, and I advised uh, Venerable Ananda, Ananda, now you have to traverse the three city walls of the Vesali, the city, and you have to sprinkle this water while you yourself chant the Ratana Sutta. So Venerable Ananda went with the princess and they would sprinkle the water. And if they, in some places, they have, uh, these evil spirits are still hiding in, some places, and then this water was sprinkled and water was fell upon their bodies, they also fled. They couldn't be there any longer. The majority had left earlier because of the esteem of the power of the Buddha. The ones who were hiding also could not stay long. And when these uh, drops of water, the water that was sprinkled, fell upon the sick, they also got cured. 
and they joined with and the Balananda and the princess and they went in this way throughout the city of Vesali chanting the Hatana Sutta and sprinkling the water. So, and finally they arrived in the center of the city where the princess, they arranged a hall for the Buddha and the Sangha to reside. And they had the assembly. And the devas, Godsak and the devas, they were in the sky. Whereas the people, the princess and the people were seated, seated in front of the assembly where the Buddha and the Sangha were seated. And then again Buddha chanted the Ratana Sutta. And 84,000 people who were sick before, who were dying, who were suffering immensely, realized the fruits of the path. And for six more days, each day Buddha chanted the Atan Sutta. And each day, 84,000 people attained fruits of the path. So in this way, it is, this sutta is not, it has great power, it's a profound sutta. And if we can learn this sutta and its meaning properly and chant this sutta, there is great protection, blessings you can gain in your life to alleviate the various sufferings or calamities you might yourself face. And if you chant this regularly, like again, you can you can get protection from these diseases as well, like the COVID viruses. It's all about your belief. So today we will learn the meaning of the sutta. Okay? That is the origin story, what we discussed up to. So how does the sutta begin? Huh? This is something you are familiar with, no? The Ratan Sutta. So everyone switch on your cameras. I see there are 23 participants, but I see only very few. Oh, there are more, okay. So I think every one of you have heard the Ratan Sutta, no? So it begins like Yani the Bhutani Samagatani Bhumani Maya Niva Antalike Sabeva Bhuta Sumana Bhavantu Atopi Sakata Sunantu Bhasitan. So don't worry about the Pali, I will explain okay what it means. That's the whole idea of like learning the meaning. So Yani the Bhutani Samagatani. Okay, now when you say like Bhutani, people think we are like addressing the ghosts. That is what normally people believe, evil spirits. But that's not the case. Here Bhutani means ones who are born, like the ones who are alive. The Bhuta means the born. Born in the sense here, Buddha is addressing whom? Buddha is addressing the deities. The devas, the god Sak and the entourage of devas that are present there. Yani the Bhutani, Samagatani means the ones who have gathered here. Bhumani Vayani Vantaliki. Bhumani means who are dwelling on earth. Antaliki means in the skies. Because devas, some devas live among us. In trees, they have their mansions in trees. They are called tree dwelling devas, and some mean rocks and mountains. So there are devas deities who live among us. So they experience far more places than we humans do. We can't see them with our naked eyes. Okay. Then there are devas. Okay, in higher heaven levels. Antalikya skies will chatum harajika tautin sa yam to sita nimmarati paranimita vasavati. These are the other heavenly worlds. 
and uh, they were so happy him being so uh, accrued much more merits are born in this higher heavenly worlds where there is abundance of pleasure so buddha in this case addressed both these groups of they were living on earth and in the skies okay bumma nimaya nima antalike because they had all gathered there sabbeva bhuta sumana bhavantu me it sab sumana bhavantu means uh, sumana means happy may you all have happy minds says the buddha atopi sakkatta sunantu bhasita and very attentively careful listen to what i am going to say so see here both the begins with loving kindness so actually this ratana sutta is a mixture of buddha's loving kindness and the power of truth you find in the buddha dhamma sangha the truthful virtues supreme qualities you find in the buddha dhamma and sangha and the buddha loving kindness that's what is in the ratan sutta that's the essence of the sutta so that is a buddha say so in english it is like this it is like whatever beings assembled here whether on earth or in the sky may all these beings have happy minds and listen closely to my words that's the first verse then buddha says tasmahi bhuta nisame te sabbe mettam karot manusya padaya diva charato charanti e balin tasmahi ne rakkata apamatta so tasmahi bhuta nisame te sabbe means he's buddha saying these beings these humans metta they are always divacharatto charanti malin day and night these human beings they pay offerings to you to whom to the deva so buddha is telling the, the devas deities look these humans day and night they are paying homage to you they are giving various offerings to you metan karot manusya paja why aren't you spreading loving kindness to them why aren't you helping them out in a time of peril because they are now suffering they are in need of your help why are you not caring for them why aren't you coming not coming to their aid why are you not spreading loving kindness why aren't you not serving why are you not not showing love to them as the buddha he is asking from the devas he is urging the deities to help them why because they are suffering because they have taken care they have made offerings they have paid respect to the deities but still now they have looked at it seems so that is the meaning of the second verse buddha says pay attention all you beings so loving kindness to those humans who day and night offer merit to you therefore guard them diligently because people offer share merit with the deities because we also share merit with the deities don't we and people in that time they had made various offerings to the deities as well that is why buddha said therefore guard them diligently protect them help them he says then in the next verse both this says yang kinchi vitta idava hurangwa sagge suvayang ratanam panita nano samangati tathagatena idampi buddhi ratanam panita etena satchena swati hotu yang kinchi vitta idava hurangwa that means idava means in this world purangma means in other worlds whatever things you find that are precious in this world and other worlds like whatever things you find precious in the human worlds like what gold gems 
occurs. Likewise, there are things that we consider precious and valuable in this world. Likewise, in the heavenly worlds also, there are very precious things, likewise. So here, Buddha says, Yankin Chivitang Idava Horangwa, Sagye Suayang Ratanam Panitang. So whatever there is precious in this world or in the heavenly worlds, precious jewels, okay, Ratanam means precious jewels. So that means whatever things that are considered valuable. None of these can be compared in value to who? Tathagata, the Buddha. None of them can be compared because the Buddha is the most precious jewel. Nano samangati tathagata. Idampi Buddha ratanam panita. This is precious quality, precious jewel to be found in the Buddha, Ethen Satchen Suati Hotu. That means by this truth may there be well be. And that is where the power lies. Because it is truth. No one can deny the truth that Buddha is the most precious jewel in the world. Be it in this world we see or any other world for that matter. The most precious jewel. So that is, no one can deny that truth. You can, no, you can, no one can oppose that. So there lies the power. That is why it says, by this truth may, are they, may there be well being and the Buddha bless us. It's a determination, a proclamation made by the Buddha. Based on this power of truth, may you have happiness. He's spreading loving kindness. It is called, uh, we say, Satcha Kiriya, act of truth. Or Satcha Adityena, that means a determination of truth or asseveration. So that is where the power lies, in the truth of these qualities, the virtues you find in the Buddha in this case. So this is how it is uh, translation. So when you translate, it means whatever treasures there may be, here or in the world beyond, or whatever precious jewel in the heavens, none is equal to the Buddha. In the Buddha is this precious jewel. By this truth, may there be well being. So that is the meaning of the third verse. Then the fourth verse is Kayang viragang amatang panitang yadhajaga sakya muni samahito natena dhammena. Samati kinchi idampi dhammi ratanam panita etena satchena suati hotu. So it means kayang viragang amatang panita. Kayang means here we are discussing the dhamma. First we discuss the quality of the Buddha. Here idampi dhammi ratanam panita, the precious jewel of that is to be found in dhamma. Here discuss this dhamma. So in the Dhamma, Kayang means Dhamma is, Dhamma has the ability to eradicate what greed, anger, delusion. Viraga means it has the power to create non-attachment. Amatang means it, it uh, shows you the path to deathless. Panitang, it's, it's very sweet, the Dhamma. So, Kayang, Viraga, Amata, Panitang, Yadajaga, Sakti, Muni, Samaito. And such, an, uh, such Dhamma, a Dhamma of such nature, were taught by Sakti, Muni, is another word for Buddha. Samahaita means the Sakti, Muni, with the sage, with Muni means sage. The sage with the concentrated mind taught such a Dhamma, a Dhamma was of such excellence was taught by the Buddha. Natena Dhamma in Samadhi Kinchi. There is nothing that we that can be compared to that teaching of the Buddha. Idampi Dhamma Ratanam Panina. That is a precious jewel to be found in the Dhamma. Etena Satchena Swati Hotu. By this truth, may there be 
well-being. So when translated, it means the Dhamma realized by the calm, Satya and Sage, leading to the deathless Nibbana, free from passion and undefiled. There is nothing equal to that Dhamma. In the Dhamma is this precious jewel. By this truth may there be well-being. And in this verse, Buddha invokes the virtue of the Dhamma and by that power of truth, he blesses the beings. Okay? That's the fourth verse. The fifth verse is, Yang Buddha Seto Parivanna Yisuching Samadhimanang Tarikanyamanu Samadhimanang Samadhinathena Samone Vijati Idampi Dhamme Ratanam Panitang Etena Hachena Suvakti Hodu Okay, this is the fifth verse. Young Buddha said to Parivanna means very pure. Buddha said to means the great Buddha. If there is a certain Samadhi Manang Tarimanika, so it means if there is a certain state of concentration that is praised by the Buddha, here it is talked about that concentration. There is a certain Meditative attainment that has been praised by the Buddha, Samadhina Tena Samona that it cannot be compared to any other state of Samadhi. So it is something very unique. What is that? Samadhi Manang Tarikanyamana means Anant, we know Anantarika Papakam, you may have heard that means if you kill your mother, father, an arahant, shed the blood of a Buddha or create system among the Sangha, that is anantari papa karma. That means then straight very anantari means there is no in between. If you do any of these highness acts, what happens straight away you are being born in hell. So the same meaning has there sam samadhi ma mana. Anantarikanya mao means anantarika. Samadhi. Anantarika means there is no in between in this case. If you attain this state of samadhi, you will not be in between any birth. Like you are free of rebirth. That means this is here it is discussed a samadhi attained by an arahant. Like in our case, if you are not here, when we pass away here, we will be in another world. Okay, so in the case of this state of samadhi, in, that means in the state of an arahanship, they cease to exist no, with, when you pass away, they attain parinibbana. So this state of samadhi therefore is very unique and it is experienced only by an arahant. So Buddha is praising this state of samadhi, like whatever samadhi you may experience, like okay, first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, or any of the form or formless jhanas, whatever jhana you may practice, once you die, accordingly you will be reborn in the form sphere or formless sphere. But you are, if you are able to practice the noble eightfold path and attain this state of samadhi experienced by an arahant, then you will not be reborn. Therefore, Buddha says, this is very unique, this state of Samadhi. And it cannot be compared to anything else. That is the meaning of that verse. So it is, when translated, it is like this. The state, that state of concentration with no more becoming, that means it, it does not lead to any rebirth, praised as pure by the Buddha, that concentration has no equal. In the Dhamma is this precious jewel. By this truth, may there be well be. Again, based on that truth, that virtue, that quality you find in the Dhamma, Buddha blesses, spreads loving kindness. Then the sixth verse. Ye Puggala Atta Satang Pasatta Chattari Etani Yugani Hunti 
doesn't carry quite carry the meaning satpurish means a person who has confidence in the buddha dhamma sangha and who basically practices the dhamma and who has a good understanding about life so a very refined character a worthy character a praiseworthy character a satpurish a good person so he say ye puggala atta satam passa there are these people these eight persons who are praised by the satpurusha the good ones so these eight individuals are praised by the noble ones or the good satpurusha people chatari etani yugani honti so when taken in couples there are four all in all in individuals there are eight individuals okay they dakineya sugata sasavaka they are the disciples of the buddha dakineya means they are worthy of offerings so the sangha they are worthy of offerings so like here uh, sugata sa ete su dinnani mahapalani means when you offer uh, these uh, offerings to these eight individuals me the eight individuals discussed here are the eight individuals who attain fruits of the path how do how are they eight first we have the person who is practicing the path to attain stream entry then there is the stream entrant then the person practicing the path to attain once once returner once returner okay one thing there is the one sitter he has attained the path then one practicing the path to non returning then one who has attained the fruition of non returning and the one who is practicing the path to arahantship mm-hmm. and the one who has attained arahantship so all in all eight so these are the sangha the disciples of the buddha ete su dinnani mahapalani if you offer arms given arms so anything else any form of offering to these sangha who have attained the fruits of the path so also the practices as you see one who are practicing to be stream entrants then you reap the form of uh, merits mahapalai maha that means there are many benefits for you a lot of merit you can acquire by doing so idam pi sangha ratanam panita that means that is a precious jewel to be the sangha that if you want to acquire merit whom you should give to give the sangha there was an instance where prajapati gautami uh, you know prajapati gautami he raised the buddha when he was the prince after his mother queen mahamaya passed away he was the one who raised the buddha she was the one who raised the buddha so she once came to the buddha she had herself prepared and sewn a robe and he want she wanted to offer it to the buddha and when she was going to do that buddha said no prajapati go to me offer to the sangha not to me if you offer to the sangha it means you have offered to me as well so both the english way encourage to offer to the sangha why it reaps more benefits as a individual you can't find any other person that the buddha to whom you can offer and acquire merit but as a group as a whole that merit you can acquire even more than given to the buddha if you give to the sangha so it doesn't buddha encar give to the sangha that so then it means you have offered me as well so that is why it is say dampi sangha ratana ete su dinnani mahapalani that means when you give to the sangha you reap the most benefits 
idampi sangi ratanam panitang ete ne satchi ne swatyo to so this is a precious jewel that is to be found in the sangha so by this truth may there be well being so the translation is the eight individuals praised by the wise these four pairs are the gift worthy disciples of the well gone one gifts given to them yield abundant fruit in the sangha is this precious jewel by this truth may there be well be so that's the meaning of sixth verse then we move on to the seventh verse again it's about the sangha another precious jewel that is to be found among the sangha ye suppayutta manasa dalhena nikhamino gotama sasanam so ye suppayutta means when properly practice these monks these sangha manasa dalhena means like very determined mind when they sangha practice determination practice with determination nikhamuna gotama sasanam gotama sasanam means the buddha's dispensation when these monks practice diligently with determination in the buddha's dispensation what happens nikhamuna they go beyond they escape from what the refinements te patti patta amatan vigai then what, what do they do when you are free of defilements you are arhat and it is very nice a beautiful te patti patta amatan vigai laddha muda nimbutin bunjamana bunjamana means to eat here buddha used this word like it what do they eat what do they feed on they feed on nibbana that means they enjoy that happiness so would they use the word they feed on it they uh, cherish that and they experience that because like they are free of defilements a great achievement that is so very precious and because we find arahants having attained uh, uh, arahantship being free of defilements they can sit in meditation for seven days straight away in ido the samapatti enjoying that bliss the bliss of nibbana so that is a buddha used the nibbutang nibbutin bunjamana bunjamana means to feel like to experience that that precious attainment they dwell in that state of attainment and arahantship idampi sange ratanam panitam that means that is a very idampi sange ratanam panitam means it's a precious jewel that is to be found among the sangha etena satyena suvatthyo by this truth may there be well be so this is the translation those who are well trained freed from all defilements and with minds firm in gotama buddha's training upon attaining nibbana they plunge into the deathless freely enjoy the liberation they have gained in the sangha is this precious jewel by this truth may there be well be so that is the meaning of that verse then buddha recites the next verse yatin the kilo pataving sitosiya chatubbi vate bi asambha kampiyo that in the kilo means in the kilo in the time of the buddha in uh, cities there have been like uh, very tall poles that have been erected in the middle of the cities it i think is like more like uh, you know what you call that towers to like uh sighting post like uh, there are certain towers like lookouts it's a lookout sort of so from that i think you can a person can be on the top of the tower and you can see if there are animals are approaching the kingdom from far away so these towers they are very built very strongly say like uh, say if it is 8 meters above the ground then it is uh, below the ground also it's 8 meters it's a uh, uh, under the earth so that's how it's so very strong so in such a pillar such a post it is said 
chatubbi vatai bi asampa kampiyo because it is uh, it goes right down into the earth even if there are four winds to four, four winds were to come from the four direction it would not waver why because it is it has a solid ground it's well uh, drilled into the ground so tatu pamang sapuri sangwadami and buddha says i liken that the, the satpurisa yo ariya satcha ani avecha pase the satpurisa the person the good person who has realized the four noble truths put the buddha likens him to such a post an unwavering post that here the, so the what are the wins a person who has realized the four noble truths a person who has at a the fruition of stream entry he is unwavered in face of what the all the wrong views that he may come across in this world he will not be toppled for, by them he will remain steadfast because he is steadfast in confidence in the buddha dhamma and sangha when you become a stream entrant you become you have steadfast comfort, confidence in the buddha steadfast confidence in the dhamma steadfast confidence in the sangha and what else do we have what are the fundamental aspects of a person who has attained the process of stream entry these three and noble, what else noble virtue uh, the virtue dear to the noble ones that means he will never break the precepts he have taken up that's not going to happen okay so here buddha liken such a person to a tower like this erected in the city so it's drilled down into the earth and it will not waver it will always remain steadfast so it is said idam pisange ratanam panitang etena satyena suadhyote so it as a stone pause firmly grounded in the earth cannot be shaken by the four winds so is the superior person or the good person i say but they say so is the superior person i say who clearly sees the normal truths in the sangha is this precious jewel by this truth may they are be well be so see how beautiful the loving kindness of the buddha so no one can deny this truthful qualities you find in the buddha dhamma and sangha and therefore there is immense power when you chant because it is undeniable truth because in the case of the buddha's past lives even you, you see before attaining buddhahood we know for many lives past life he perfected the qualities necessary to attain buddhahood okay he did so so it is say like throughout this many many hundreds of thousands of years he have never uttered a false word he has always been truthful therefore when buddha speaks of the truth it has great weight great depth and power that is it's unimaginable that is why this uh, even today the power of this sutta the truth this the determination this asseveration by the buddha it has it pervades to many many galaxies hundreds of thousands of millions of galaxies even today that is there so next verse is ye arya satchani vibhavayanti gambira panyena sudesitani kinchapite honti busappata नते भवं आत्मं आदियन्ति दाम्पि संगे रतनं पनीतं एतेन सच्चेन सुवाति होतु सो अगेन इट्स अबाउट द संग अ क्वालिटी इन द संग ये आर्य सच्चानि विभावयन्ति इफ अ मंक अ डिसाइपल ऑफ द बुद्ध रियलाइजेस आर्य सच्च मींस द फोर नोबल ट्रुथ्स गंभीर पन्येन सुदेश गंभीर पन्ये इज अनदर वर्ड टू बुद्ध मीनिंग the per, one with great wisdom deep wisdom one with deep wisdom sudesitani means taught this dhamma taught by the buddha with great wisdom 
if a disciple is able to realize the four noble truths kincha pite honti busapamata no matter how uh, heedless he may be because here it is we are discussing about the stream enter not an arahant so when you attain the fruition of stream enter what do you realize what is the realization you gain anyone when you become a stream entrant of the four noble truths what do you gain realization what is the realization you gain about the four noble truths anyone is it satcha gyana yeah. satcha gyana you gain the realization of that means you realize indeed there is in this world a true noble truth of suffering indeed there is the noble truth of cause of suffering in this there is the noble truth of the cessation of suffering in this there is the noble truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering you gain a realization that indeed there exist the four noble truths that is satcha jnana that is the beginning that then you are stream entrant okay so it is said the kincha apite honti busappa mata such a person once he realizes that indeed the four noble truths are in fact a truth that exists in the world nate bhavan attamang adiyandi no matter how heedless he might be in the practice he will not be born an eighth time at most he will be reborn only seven lives before that he will realize nibbana why because when you become a stream entrant that means you have entered the stream the noble eightfold path then certain qualities are thereafter ingrained in you what are those qualities shraddha confidence in the buddha dhamma sangha virya effort sati mindfulness samadhi concentration and wisdom panya so these things become integral part of your life like say like you are senses i you know stun and body and mind there are some things that are with you part and partial so likewise these qualities become part and partial it's always there with you then there will be shraddha seela suta chaga pratnya the powers of the training virtue confidence virtue dhamma knowledge generosity and wisdom they will be ingrained within you they will always be like or else what happens in our case if you don't realize the dhamma now because you have the association with, with noble friends you are okay you are in among good people then what happened in another life you associate with the bad people then what happens you also may do evil deeds bad things corrupt things why because that qualities are not ingrained in you unlike a stream entered that is the difference here so therefore in the case of a stream entered no matter how heedless he might be still he will not be reborn more than seven rebirths because he is always cleansing himself why he knows what is right and what is wrong he has that guidance the vision vision of the dhamma is there to guide him direct him so that is what is idampi sange ratanam panika etena satyena suvathyo this is a precious jewel in the sangha so the meaning is those who comprehend the noble truths well taught by the buddha with deep wisdom no matter how negligent would not take an eighth existence in the sangha is this precious jewel by this truth may there be well being so that is the ninth verse 10th verse is sahavasa dasana sampadaya tayasu dhamma jaita bhavanti sakkaditti vichikichitanta silabbatam vapi adatti kinchi tat chatuha paaye hicha vip mutto chachabitana ni babbu kaatu idampi sange ratanam panittam etena satchena swadhyoto so sahavasa dasana sampadaya 
So that means Dasana Sampada means when you gain vision. Here vision means vision you gain through wisdom. That means once you see what? Once you see the Four Noble Truths for the first time. Once you realize it is wisdom. That means when you become a stream entrant. Payasu Dhamma Jaita Bhavanti. Three Dhammas. Three things are gratified from you. What are what three? Sakkai Ditti Vichikichitanta. Seelabhatanga Api Adati Kinti. Sakkai Ditti. Self-view. Vichikicha. Doubt. Silabhata means what? Clinging to precepts and observances. So these are fetters. Unless you, without destroying these, these three fetters, you cannot become a stream entrant. So when you become a stream entrant, you get rid of Sakha Aditi. What is Sakha Aditi? Anyone? Sakha Aditi means what? What is Sakai? Identity view. Huh? I can't hear you. Sorry. Identity view. Ah, Sakai is the five, another name to five aggregates of clinging. View means so you view the five aggregates of clinging. How? You view them as me, mine, myself. That is wrong. You are supposed to see them as conditioned phenomena. Instead, you see them as my form, my feeling, my perception, my volitions, my consciousness. Likewise. So that is drawn, that view. So that is eradicated. Vichikicha means you have doubt about the Buddha, the Dhamma and Sangha. Then thereafter, no more doubts about the practice or the teachings or the teacher himself. Sila Bhatanga Piyadatikin, then you have no, you don't cling to precepts and observances like because like something to be in a vegetarian means a virtue rather it's a what it's a choice a person means it has got nothing to do with the path or the purification of life a person cannot be purified by what he eat okay so if you think that that is going to purify you that is clinging to an observance or precept so that is wrong then you get rid of that then chatu hapaye hicha vipamutto. Then you are free of what the four bad destinations once you become a stream entered. You are free for ever. From what? From the hell world, from the ghost world, from the animal world, the titans world. Chacha bitanani ababokatu. And you will never ever perform these six evil deeds. What are they? Six things, okay? First is you will not kill your mother, idea of father. You will not kill an arahant. You will not shed the blood of a Buddha with an evil intention. Or you will not create schism among the Sangha. And the sixth is you will never ever take up a wrong view. Okay? So in that case, six. So a stream entrant will never ever do that. Because why? He will not, because he has a virtue dear to the noble ones. He will never be, break any precepts. So he will never kill living beings. Now that is the risk in our life. Now, because we have come across the Dhamma, we will not do these things. But later on in the sansara, we might kill our mother, father. An arahant. Any of these things we can do. Why? We have still not entered the path. We have not attained the fruition of at least stream entry. That is the danger in our lives. So in this case, they are free of these things. It will never happen. Chachabitanani Abhabbo means there is no probability of that happening. Idampi Sangha Ratanam Panitang. It is a precious jewel that we found in the Sangha. So the meaning is for one who attains right view, three fetters are at once abandoned. Self-view and doubt clinging to wrong practices. Freed from the four planes of misery, 
Incapable is he of the six deeds leading to hell. In the Sangha is this precious jewel. By this truth, may there be well being. So that is the tenth verse. Eleventh verse is Kincha piso kammang karoti papakang kaye nevacha udacheta sava. Ababu sota paticha dai, Ababata ditta pada sota, Idampi sangira tanam panitang, ete in a sachene, suatio to here again there is discussed another quality of the sangha. Kinchapiso kamankaro di papagam means if a stream entrant does anything wrong by body, speech, or mind. So they are also still with defined master. They can do something wrong by body, speech, or mind. But kaya nama cha udha chere sami means by body, speech, or mind. Ababo sota se pati chadai. Pati chadai means but they will not hide it. That will never happen. They will not hide their mistake. What to do they? Uh, they will go. To a wise person and reveal, okay, I have in this way did the wrong deed. I will correct myself. He opens himself up. Normally, people when they do something wrong, they try to hide it. No, so then you become more and more defiled. Why? Why do you hide? Because you always try to protect your image as a person. Why you have self view? No. But in the case of a stream entered, he doesn't see a person there. Like he has some understanding. There is the existence of five aggregates that are conditioned. So his view is more refined. But in the average person, he is always trying to protect his image, build his image. And he may be ashamed in that case. Or he may be too arrogant to show his faults. But this is not the case with the stream entered. He is always open to purification. He opens himself. He does, that doesn't mean he goes telling it to everybody. He would go to a proper person, a wise person and say, okay, I have made this big mistake. I will not do this again. Because he corrects himself. So there is always an inclination to purify oneself for betterment. That is why once you attain the stream, then it's always one way. You will surely attain Nibbana. Why the process is there, the cleansing is there. It's an ongoing process. So, in this way, he cannot hide it. It says, though he might do some bad deed by body, speech, or mind, he cannot hide it. Such is he who sees the Dhamma. One who has seen the Dhamma, that is his nature. In the Sangha is this precious jewel. By this truth, may there be, will be. So next verse is one up gumbe yata pusita ge gimhana maase patamas pingi me tatu pamang dhamma varang adesai nibban gaming paraman kita ya idam pi budde ratanam panita ete ni sakche ne swati ho tu so one up gumbe yata pusita ge means so here Buddha the teachings of the Buddha is likened to the beauty of the environment. Because the environment is very beautiful in the first heat of summer. It's very refreshing. Because new flowers are blossoming. So like the world looks more refined, very beautiful. So there is something refreshing there. The Dhamma is like that. The teachings of the Buddha has that nature. So that is a precious jewel. To be found in the Buddha because the Buddha is the one who taught the Dhamma. So it is this uh, virtue that is emphasized here in this verse. Okay, It means like woodland grows in blossom. In the first heat of summer, the Buddha taught the sublime Dhamma leading to Nibbana, the highest happiness. In the Buddha is this precious jewel. By this truth, may there be, will be. So likewise, Buddha in this case invoke the quality of the Buddha 
and thereby bless all beings. Next we have Varo Varanyu Varado Varaharo Anuttaro Dhamma Varanga Desai Idampi Buddhe Ratanam Panitan Yetena Satchene Swati Hotu Varo means great Varanyu Varado Varaharo means the great sage realizing the great Dhamma spread that great teaching to many that's the meaning there Anuttaro Dhamma Varanga Desa because there is no comparison, nothing that can be compared to the teachings of the Buddha. That is a precious jewel to be found in the Buddha. So the meaning is the peerless, excellent sage, the nova of excellence, the giver of excellence. Having realized the Dhamma, Buddha gave it away, no? He spread the Dhamma throughout his life. The giver of excellence and the bringer of excellence taught the excellent Dhamma. In the Buddha is this precious jewel. By this truth, may there be well-being. Next verse is Kīnaṁ purānaṁ navannatti sambhavaṁ virat chitta āyatike bhavasmi te kīna bīja avidu lichanda nibbanti dhīra yatāyam padipu idampi sangye ratanam panita etena satchene Swatyotu. Again, the quality of the Sangha is sing of in this case. Kinang Purana. So here in this verse, the, it is uh, discussed the moment of attain Parinibban in the case of an Arahan. That moment of attaining Parinibban. Kinam Purana means in the case of an Arahan, at the moment of attaining Parinibban, all of the past come eradicated. Navanati Sambhava means in an Arahant, newcomer does not create. Once you become an Arahant, newcomer does not create. Why? The dependent origination, the process is not there. It has stopped. So in the case of an Arahant, newcomer is not created in life, but there is the past baggage of past come. But that too at the moment of Paranibbana, is eradicated. How? Because he is not reborn. Only if you, if there is rebirth, Kamma means arranging, Bhava means Bhava Pacha Jati, no? there has to be Bhava. Bhava means arranging of Kamma to bear fruit. If there is no arranging of Kamma to bear fruit, there is no rebirth. So all the past Kamma cannot come to effect. Therefore, it is eradicated at the moment of Parinibbana. That is what I say. Kinam Purana Navanati Samma. Viratta Chitta Aitike Bhavasmi. His mind will not again be attached. It's all, the, his mind is free of existence. Bhava. Te Kina Bija Avirulli Chanda. Here, Bija is the consciousness. Buddha likened consciousness to what? A seed. Because Buddha says, Kamma Ketta. Kamma is the field. Vinyana, consciousness is the seed. What is the water? The nourishment there is craving. Then the consciousness grows. In this case, Kinang Bija, the seed cannot grow anymore. Why? There is no craving. There is no karma. So therefore, there is no place for the seed to grow. So therefore, it is destroyed. Nibbanti dira yatayam padipo. So the dira means the wise ones who has realized the Dhamma, the Arahants. They cease to exist just like a lamp that is extinguished. When the lamp uh, is extinguished, the oil lamp, think of an oil lamp. When it is extinguished, can you say where the, the felt, the flame, where it went? Where the film, film went, you can't say it went to the north, south, east, or west. In what direction? You can't say it just ceased to exist. That's the case in the case of an Arahant. You can't say where they ceased to exist. You can't say where they went or likewise. There is, you can't explain in that way. This is because as long as there are supporting conditions, we cease to exist. 
when the supporting conditions are normal, then there is no more existence. So here Buddha shows like nibbanti dira yata like this oil lamp. He actually uh, points out to an oil lamp that was there at that moment. So that means the way in Buddha was teaching this is night time, and they didn't have electricity at that time. They had oil lamps as a form of lighting, and one of that oil lamp extinguished at that moment and Buddha said this was showing that oil lamp that uh, incident so idampi sange ratanam panitang etena satyena suvatyotu so the meaning is the liberated ones all come is destroyed with no new arising their minds not drawn to future birth their seeds destroyed with no more growing the arahants fade out just like this lamp in the Sangha is this precious jewel. By this truth, may there be, will be. So next verse is, so up to this moment, all the verses are chanted by whom? Who said these verses? Buddha. Okay? Buddha recited these verses. The final three verses are recited by God Sakka. So God Sakka was here, no? God Sakka thinks, okay, now Buddha has invoked the qualities of the Buddha Dhamma Sangha and blessed the whole gathering. And in the beginning, Buddha said, no, like you have to, why didn't Buddha in a sort of way said, why didn't you look after these people? He heard the devas, no? So then God Sakka said, okay, then he thought, okay, then I too should invoke the qualities of the Buddha Dhamma and Sangha and bless these people. Okay, so he now at the uh, to this moment he was in the sky with the center right. So he comes to the down, comes down, and there is a certain way by which the devas pay homage to the Buddha. So that is me. They kneel down on one knee, and the other leg is raised, and they keep the put their hands together and keep it on the forehead. And that is how they venerate, pay respect. Okay. They, then he says this verse, verse Yani the Bhutani, Samagatani, Bhuma Nivaya Nivantalikne. That means whatever beings that are assembled here, we are all on earth or in the sky. Tatagatan Devmanus Pujitan. Buddha Namasam Suatyu. They see the Buddha who are revered by Deva Manus Pujitan. Devas and humans. We also respect that Buddha, pay our homage to the Buddha. Buddha Namasam Swatyotu. And by that merit, may I bless you. So he say, I am worshipped the Buddha, the Buddha whom is worshipped by Devas and humans. And that merit I acquire by doing so. I bless you with that power of merit. So he bless the gathering. That's what happens. It says whatever beings assembled here, whether on earth or in the sky, we respectfully worship the Buddha, honored by gods and humans. May they be well being. So he pays homage to the Buddha and share the merits and bless the people. So next verse is Yani the Bhutani Samagatani, same thing, Bhumani Vayani Vantalike. But in this case, Katagatan Deva Manusa Bhujita, Dhamma Namasam Swatyotu. So he says, we respect, we pay homage to the Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha. Whatever beings assembled here, whether on earth or in the sky, we respectfully worship the Dhamma, honored by gods and humans, may they be well be. Tathagatan Devamanusu Pujanangi means the Buddha who is honored by gods and humans. Yani the Bhutani, the next final verse of the Ratana Sutta is Yani the Bhutani Samagatani. Bhumma Nivaya Nivantalikke Tathagatan Deva Manus Pujita Sanghang Namasama Suadhyotu. Whatever beings assembled here, whether on earth or in the sky, we respectfully worship the Sangha. And then he blesses, honored by gods and humans. Tathagatan Deva Manus Pujita, that is uh, repeated. The Buddha, that is revered by Devas and humans, is here. And while he is here residing, we 
payer on a respect to the Sangha. And by these merits, we acquire by doing so, we bless you, the humans. By this truth, may there be well being. So, this is Ratana Sutta. And imagine, like each time Buddha chanted this Sutta, 84,000 people realized uh, the Dhamma, fruits of the path. And the next time, likewise, they would have progress in the fruitions, noble eightfold path, because the same people listening again. And some even became Arahants, I think, in that case. So many realized the fruits of the path, 84,000 into 7, you can do the maths. So, like you can understand, like if a person actually realized the meaning and understand what he says when you listen attentively, because Buddha urged to listen attentively right in the very beginning, you grow in confidence in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha when you listen to this discourse. Then you can actually gain fruits of the path by doing so. So that's what happened here. And they are wise enough to realize the Dhamma and they attend fruits of the path. And even still, by chanting the Ratana Sutta in this way, a person can reap the benefits. It all depends on uh, your confidence in the teachings. Because you, that is so your confidence grows only if you understand what is chanting, what, what you are chanting, the exact meaning behind it, the implications. Then if you, uh, the confidence has to be, have, be there to actually have the benefits. The more confident you are of the teachings. Uh, because uh, if your mind is uh, overcome with the defilements, when you chant the paritta, then it's not as successful. If the defilements subside, then there is more power there. So it is uh, important that you actually understand why you chant, what you chant, the meaning behind it. And if you do it with great faith, then the benefits are there even still. Because uh, uh, that uh, power, it still pervades in all of the universe. Power of the Ratan Sutta Chanti. Even today, you can reap the benefits. So, uh, is the time up? I am not sure. Like Almost, no? So, there is a very, it might not, it would not, it won't take long, so I might as well say that. So, now in this case, uh, as you see, Buddha, now once, then Buddha stayed there for, I think, uh, two weeks and Buddha left. Again, uh, when he was leaving to Rajagha, likewise, there were many offerings made to the Buddha. And once, like even from all the Brahma worlds, uh, Nagas, they all came to pay respect. Buddha and offered flowers, incense and all those decorations and even more while he was returning. So once the monks went to the monastery, they discussed among themselves. It's quite unbelievable the, the reverence Buddha received by the devas, the nagas, naga, the humans, all beings throughout this journey. It's unimaginable. They were thinking, talking about this and then Buddha came and asked like, what were you talking before I came here? Once they said, uh, Buddha says, uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, the reason is, uh, it's a small thing I did, a small good deed I did in past life that I received all that veneration and respect and Buddha tells the incident. In a past life, uh, there was a father and a son, Brahmi, and when the son came of age, he when was 16, uh, he was sent away to study the Veda to another uh, place. And while he was, uh, yeah, he's, he was being taught by his teacher. Now his, his name was Susima, as I remember. Now Susima is studying, studying the way the teachings from another Brahmin teacher. And he was very clever and he quickly learned the teachings, what he was taught, memorized them. And when he was uh, reciting on, in, on his own, he understood the middle is very clear of the teachings. The beginning is very clear. And the middle is also very clear, but the end is seemed to be missing. Then he goes back to the teacher and I feel teacher that uh, some of the teachers like there doesn't seem to be ending this. Like something is missing here. Then the teacher says, yes, uh, it's true. The end part even I don't know. So he asked like, is there any other person for me to learn? Then he said, yeah, you have to go to Isipatana. If you go there, there are sages 
Is it there is there are Pachaka Buddhas or at that time Pachaka Buddhas you know for those who don't know who Pachaka Buddhas are Pachaka Buddhas are means they also realize the teachings without a teacher like Buddha does but they cannot teach it to any other person or uh, actually come up like uh, they cannot establish a dispensation like Buddha would, uh, Buddha would do they realize on their own and they just pass away by attaining a hardship. In the case of Pacheka Buddhas, that's how it happens. So this Susima went to those Pacheka Buddhas. Then they said, that's where the teach send you. If you go to them, they will teach you the end. So they he went there and the Pacheka Buddha said, oh, if, you are, if you want to know the end, how it ends, then you have to ordain with us. So then he agreed because he wanted to learn the full teaching. So then once they ordained, they taught him very few things, but he was wise enough. They can't actually teach, they can give hints. So because Susima was very wise and he had the past minutes, he himself became a Pacheka Buddha. And he was, he became, in a short lifespan, short time span, he became very popular among the people. But sadly, he couldn't live long and he died. Uh, in a young age, but as a Pacheka Buddha. And a stupa was built enshrining his relics and later on the father was waiting for his son to come back but he didn't return so he went in search and for, came to that village and asked the people do you know a brahmin son by the name of susima young youth who came here to learn that's my son i have not heard of him then they said ah yes he was learning then he went to isipatana and he lived with the pacheka buddhas and he realized the, the teaching. He became a Pacheka Buddha himself and he passed away. He was very popular with the people and people respected and revered him a lot. But sadly, he passed away. Now a stupa has been built and stunning his relics. And so is the stupa. So the father weeping and wailing because he didn't expect this. He didn't think something like this would have happened to his son. He goes to the stupa and he cries a lot. And in the end, he to pay respect, beloved son, and also Pachika Buddha now, uh, he takes his soul and fills the soul with sand, and he brings sand and put it in the two stupa compound, white sand. Then he brings flowers, and he brings a pot of water, dip the flowers, and offer dip the flowers in the water and offer it to the stupa. Then he sprinkle water in the stupa count super compound and then with the soil he did he made a flag and it erected in the super compound it, it, he offered it to the super actually so buddha says because i mm, put white sand there in the super compound white sand was uh, put for me when i went to vesal Ve Ve throughout the uh, road the path was covered with white sand and also he removed weeds because I removed weeds in the stupa. The, the whole road was cleared of debris and anything else. And because I offered flowers to the stupa of that Pacheka Buddha, flowers were offered to me knee deep of five colors for devas and all the people, humans. And because I sprinkled water uh, to the stupa and the stupa compound, there was the downpour of the torrential rain when Buddha set foot in the Vesali. Uh, likewise, uh, all those things was there because of what? Buddha's past merit. And because of the, he used his soil as a flag, they erected flags and banners for the Buddha in reverence along the way. So all of this was because uh, Buddha's past merit. I think if the rain was because it sprinkles of water. That's as I remember. That may be a bit different. But that's the case as I remember. So um, that's it. That's the Ratana Sutta. So I hope you learn something. So this is a very powerful Sutta. You can and you should chant at home. Then you will have that protection. And I say when you chant this, if there are evil spirits in your life, like you should not do say like you have certain problems and you suspect that there is a, I am suffering 
the influence of these spirits when you chant the ratan sutta you should not do it with anger or to get back to them because here or throughout the sutta is loving kindness no that's where the power lies in the loving kindness in the metta and the truth of these words the virtues of the buddha dhamma sangha so you have to be very humble and if you humbly with faith chant they will also feel sorry for you and if they are very evil because of this power they can't stay there and they will leave you have to get, first in the beginning you will have more trouble because they will put up some fight in a say you, they would want you to stop so they would do something to uh, make you stop but still if you persevere with the mind of loving kindness not getting angry even such situations can be overcome by chanting the ratan sutta first you have to clean your house and then you offer flowers and incense to the buddha and then you chant the ratan sutta with the bowl of water then you can sprinkle that water throughout your house when you begin a certain new camp whatever project or whatever in this way the blessings you can get and if you do this daily and you can drink that water what you have chanted the paritta water then you will have protection even from the viruses diseases it's about the belief okay so i hope you learned something today uh so if there are questions you may ask time for questions if you have to if there are any questions um i guess i have a question yeah sure so i i've been reading the pali canon uh, recently and i guess i'm in the early parts of it where it's describing uh what you should get rid of in your life um so i guess i'm understanding what should be removed but i haven't really learned how to do it or what the buddhist approach of doing that is so i guess we can pick one like let's say uh like with attachments like greed like what is the practical or or buddhist way to remove that from your life you mean like removing greed right yeah like to to not feel that emotion um that people sometimes have yeah say like uh, in the teachings of the buddha the process is a uh, methodical practice that uh, you have to approach it stage by stage like greed some certain defilements like of defilements buddha said you have to see with wisdom and eradicate then and there so greed may arise within you certain sense of attachment you want to hold on to that thing so the first you have to first recognize if only you are mindfulness you can recognize that state so mindfully you recognize say it say like it's something that uh, you find you are overly attached to something animate or inanimate then uh, you first realize okay this is there and i feel that this attachment is there and i have to get rid of this state this is not a good thing to prolong why because it's going to cause suffering you yeah, that understanding because everything that we get attached to there is a, a nature what is the nature of that the fundamental nature of everything is it's impermanent it is subject to change it is something subject to destruction it is something you would have to give up it is something that you cannot control it is something you cannot exercise control over it if maybe you want to be loud dance it will be a car uh, or your watch or whatever all things are like subject to destruction one day you have to leave them behind so this sort of thinking this contemplating in wisdom coming to terms with this reality that is actually the strength that gives you to accept the reality through wisdom so you know one day i will have to leave this behind and it is this nature of these things that they are subject to destruction 
they're still knowing that you can associate with those things. You can associate with your loved ones, one, your family members. You can maintain the things you love, if it's a car or vehicle or your premises or whatever. But you know the true nature of these things. And when there comes a day when you truly want to let go of those things, you are ready because you have trained your mind that wisdom is there to support you. So it is toward that then that the teachings of the Buddhas help you uh, build a certain maturity in your life so that you can actually give up when the time comes. It's there, that understanding is there. Or it's people, Buddha say, it's people who do not understand this nature of impermanence, the non-self, the suffering there. They cling to these things and then in their case, because the clinging is there, when the time comes, when they have to give up the things they love, they suffer. Ones who have trained their mind to think in that pattern, suffering will not, they will not suffer in that case. Because that understanding, it is there, that wisdom. They have practiced that wisdom. So in this way, there are ways, certain things you have to train, the things, there are tools, like in various suttas you find different ways to look at life. You are given more and more options that make you more strong so that you can better cope and actually in the end totally give up the things that make you suffer, that is craving in the end. Okay, So you have to learn more and more suttas. That is why in this class we learn suttas and then we get more and more tools to fight the defilements. That is why we have to keep on studying the original teachings of the Buddha. Then we can incorporate these things into life and alleviate the suffering. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Namo Buddha, Bhante, I have a question. Yeah. Um, Bhante, um, I, I think only in few suttas or paritas I saw Supreme Buddha mentions etena satchina suvati hotu. And uh, what is the reason behind it saying that only for few suttas and I didn't see for all the suttas or other suttas? Um, Why maybe... do you find this um, like the basing in few suttas? That's what the question? Like, uh, the question is why only few suttas uh, it's mentioned etena satchina suvati hotu. At the end or in the middle of the suttas, but not on the, uh, all the other suttas, like all the thousands of suttas. Yeah. Like uh, it is like now as we understood, as we realized here, uh, there is a purpose. So there is a reason behind why Buddha had to speak the sutta. In this case, it is for protection. Mm -hmm. It is to bless. In those cases, Buddha... In the end, he would say, Tena Satchena Suvati Hotu. In mm. other case, it is for direct realization in many of the suttas to make mm. them realize the Dhamma. Mm. It's a far more exalted blessing to realize the Dhamma. So it is about the circumstances and the purpose of the sutta. Thereby, the deliverance differ. And uh, these are for blessings. In the suttas, where there are blessings. That okay. is where we find it in Satya Nusuvat. But in each and every sutta, the power of truth is there. Yes, the yes. Yeah. Buddha, all is truthful. Yes, Bhante. Yeah, undoubtedly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bhante. Many minutes. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, here, uh, we have a question on the chat. Yes, Bhante. Uh, Buddha Bhante, how do you transform the mind? Transform the mind. Well, you don't actually transform the mind. You actually eradicated the defilements of the mind. It is in a way a transformation in the process. So, so this is not a question to which you can give like a simple answer. The whole practice is about transformation of the mind. Purifying the mind. That is what the, that is the aim, the goal of the, the ultimate goal of the teachings of the Buddha. So how you do that is it in each and every sutta. So in each and every sutta, there is a clue, there is a methodology, there is a 
skill with the teachers to do that exactly to transform your mind to purify your mind so we will learn this in future sutta so so then you can be then be transform your mind that means cleanse your mind purify your mind it from the defilements okay so keep on learning so you can do it on your own you have to do it on your own even the buddhas they only saw the way it's up to you to do the task okay Bhante, Shall we? yeah any yeah, questions? I have a question yeah. um okay. so it's always bothered me let's say um these things about famine uh, like like this coronavirus you know uh, i mean i know that it they they come they come it could be like a natural a cycle you know things like this now uh today uh, bante told us about ratana sutta where in buddha uh used this sutta to kind of kind of um a way to 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 eradicate this kind of um this kind of uh famine or this plague right so so what what do you think is the real significance um wherein we we praise and we 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 um we talk about the the, the triple gems uh of uh, of this sutta and using the sutta to to somehow fight against this kind of calamities and this kind of uh, uh coronavirus so so do you get my point so i just want to know what is the connection with this is it um uh, is it that um uh this virus is something um uh, done by Mara, you know, something like that. So can um, can Bante share more about this one? Thank you, Sadhu. Well, this is the this uh, the virus and these things is not a thing of the Mara. It is actually a thing okay. that we have to experience because of the birth. Actually, the virus is not the problem. The problem here is that uh, our body is. Uh, the nature of our body is it gets sick. That is where the problem lies. That is why Buddha said aging, sickness, the nature, jara marana, the aging, the, the aging and getting nature of the body where it is prone to sickness. That is where the problem lies. Not the virus, these are things of the world that there is. That is why Buddha's solution is always everlasting. Why Buddha asks us to understand the true nature of the body and give up our attachment, our desire to the body. Because Buddha has said, like, think of this uh, body as a um, nest. Like, why do birds, uh, uh, Buddha said of the body, that this, this body is the nest for illnesses, a nest for diseases. Now, why do birds create a nest? Nest is created so for them to lay eggs and to have small bird, like, they call chicks okay so likewise uh, this body is a place where more and more illnesses are born just think of a pharmacy and you go into pharmacy and see the various kinds of uh, uh, medication you find there so each medication represent what a sickness in your body so this body is as Buddha say a nest for diseases so Buddha said, Buddha advised the disciple, therefore, may, let this uh, body get sick, but never let your mind get sick. So that is where the Buddha's teachings come in, to purify the mind. So uh, this pandemic, those things are there, but if we can put an end to the rebirth, where then there will not be a body that is subject to sickness. We have given up the desire for the body in that case. Like, you know, there is a very beautiful incident where uh, Arhant Upasena was living in a cave in the monastery. There are other monks also living in the same in the same vicinity. And he was bit by a snake, this Arhant Upasena. Then he summoned the other monks and said, okay, I have just been bit by a snake. Uh, before this body is going to disintegrate, uh, carry and take it, keep it aside. So he is talking of his body, like if it is something that does not belong to him. And he is not uh, scared, like he's been just uh, struck by a snake, but 
he is not uh, upset by that. Then the other monks are served, right? In the same when Arana Sariput says, like you say, like you're about to pass away, that you've been just bit by a snake, but we don't see any change in your demeanor, your features. You are very calm and steady. Like if we see, see just, just see a snake, how if we get scared, let alone it being bit by it. So in this case, he was so very calm. How is that? He said, then the Tarant said, like, it's true. Like he said, it's true. If I am attached to this eye and you know, stun body and mind, then I may get scared and upset and my features would disappear. I would look scared, but that is not the case for a long time. I have realized the true nature of these six senses and given up the desire for that. So Venable Arhan Sariput also yes, said, yes, I rejoice in what you said. Uh, I know that for a long time, uh, you have given up this uh, desire for the six senses. Likewise, they rejoice in that uh, Dhamma statement. Likewise, that is the nature of Arhans. Mm -hmm. No attachment. Yeah. So that is where the solution lies. So they are so dejected in that case. But in our case, we already derive pressure from this body you know, and we try to maintain this body. And uh, of course, you have to take care of this body without being attached to it. You have to always contemplate of its, of its true nature. Then when you one day actually feel that the body is failing, you will not, you will be strong in your mind. Your mind will not get sick. Even if you were to be inf infected with the virus, then still, you know, this is the nature of this body. I have to give up the desire for this body. If I fail to do that, I will again get what? Such a body. And again suffer. That is the sansara. Okay? I see. Thank you, Bhante. So it uh, gives me um, a different kind of view, like what a um, Buddha, Buddha wanted us to to understand so it's it's we have to look at ourselves okay so whatever happens outside so it is nature it, it happens but then it's us and it is our mind now if the body is weak maybe it's because of karma of the past but then the mind should control and should uh, purify it okay because normally we we respond to to the stimulus outside right so it's it's human nature we immediately respond yeah. but now we have to think how um you know, the strength of our own mind, of ourselves. Thank you, Bhante, for clarifying. Thank you. Okay, then. shall we wrap up? Oh, I, I think I had one, one more question, if no one else does. Yeah. Um, so I, at one point, I think you talked about observations, visual observations. And I, I may have misunderstood one of the suttas I read, the Pali Canon. Uh, I think I read that visual and auditory observations cannot be cheated. Like it is a reliable source of knowledge, but I'm not sure if that's what you said or that's what I should have understood. Sorry, I didn't understand visual and? What visual and auditory observations, like our senses. Yes that yeah. they are re reliable sources of knowledge, I think? Or are you saying they're not reliable? Reliable in the sense it's uh, knowledge. What form of knowledge are we discussing here? R right, so I mean, I, well, I guess I'm just kind of thinking from like a scientific background. If I see something or hear something with my own eyes and then interpret it, I can, use those observations to learn and, and obtain knowledge, right? So I'm, I, re, I just remember one line in the Ratha Sutta that you discussed. I think you talked about visual observation. I'm not sure if I'm remembering correctly. Okay. So like, yeah, without actually uh, being specifically what Sutta we are discussing, I can give ex exact meaning. Sure. But with regard to uh, observation as generation, as general, Buddha said this, our perception is skewed. Okay. Like it is a, uh, yeah, it is a skewed, is it distorted, the perception. How? Like uh, the reality in the world is one thing, our perception is quite another. Because in the world, things are impermanent, things are subject to suffering, uh, 
uh, things are non-self and things are foul. But our perception of things are things are permanent, things create happiness, things we can exercise control of, and things we always find pleasant. But that's not the true nature. That is why there is always a clash between the reality and our perception. Therefore, we suffer. If one day, if we realize the impermanent things as impermanent, things subject to suffering as suffer, things that are subject to suffering, and things that are non-self, things we cannot exercise control over, and if we realize with wisdom, that is so. And the foul things, if we realize with uh, wisdom, that they are indeed foul, not pleasant. Let's say, think of flower. We are instantly attracted to the flower. But with wisdom, we can see the flower over time. It uh, loses its scent. It loses its beauty. And oh. then there is, uh, uh, is, uh, it is, is, when it spoils, what happens? Even the flower? then there is a bad order. So that is the impermanent, that is the change in nature, that is the foulness that is there in everything. So, mm -hmm. but in reality, we have some, uh, we have a fleeting perception of pleasantness, impermanent, that is always there, that wrong perception. That is why in the case of an arahant, uh, we are enslaved by our perception, but the arahants, they are the masters of their perception. So if Buddha says in a sutta, if there is a thing of beauty, they can view it as a thing of uh, foul. If it is a thing of beauty, they can also view it as a thing of beauty. If So likewise, they can do whatever they want to. Their perception is in their control. They are not enslaved by the perception. Why? They have realized the reality. Hmm. So these are discussed in various suttas, in various uh, mannerisms. So if we come across the sutras, we can discuss. I, I can't be sure what you're referring to. Sure. I'm, I'm very new still, but thank you, Bhante. That was a very yeah. insightful answer. Okay. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Bhante. I think there's a question in the chat box. Perhaps it can be our last question. In the chat? Yeah, Bhante, is there any sutras about selfishness? Self-centeredness about how we love others for our own sake, for our own benefit. Well, uh, this uh, in the suttas, uh, what we come across is always the underlined problems. For all of these matters we discuss, these questions you get. Of course, these are discussed. If you learn uh, suttas, if you study the suttas then we realize how, why is selfishness there and how we, the like the, the underlying problem is discussed. So then when you learn how to deal with this, these things, then uh, you actually always treat the origin in the teachings of the Buddha. So in many suttas, the underlying problems for this selfishness, self-centeredness, that is discussed. So how we love others for our own sake, for our benefit. So that is how it is. Like say that now things, uh, think of your loved ones in your family. The reality is, uh, would they say that there is no other person we love most than ourselves. So it's always about being happy oneself. So everything else in your environment you find, even your husband, wife, or your children, they are things by which you derive pleasure. That is where your happiness lies. So it is nature that we want them to be in certain ways so that they are always an object of our pleasure. But people change over time. Your husband, your wife, they may change. Your children might change. That is why you suffer. That is the nature we have to understand in life. So these things are always changing. You can't control them. You can't uh, cling on to them because they may die any moment. They may pass away. They may leave you behind. So it is about trying to come into terms of this reality. So that is why we learn the teachings of the Buddha. The more we learn, the more mature we get. So we broaden our scope, our wisdom. 
normally it's a very narrow mind we are very narrow minded a person who doesn't know the teachings so because think of animals when they see a prey that's all to catch the prey that moment that is the only so, so very narrow minded so that in their life it's all about eating and sleeping nothing more so likewise uh, when we learn the dhamma even in the people in the human world if you have not learned the teachings of the buddha it is all about enjoy the sensual pleasures nothing more to life beyond that so the more you learn the teachings of the buddha you understand all these pleasures are uh, temporary and they are all actually things that uh, make you suffer in the end therefore the reality of these things have to be understood so when you study suttas uh, patiently and diligently you can find the solutions to this i can write exactly pin point you can read this sutta and find this i can look up suttas and maybe send you some link maybe you should uh, say uh, leave your email at the sit arjuna then i may be able to send you some suttas i think it's jim who raised the question okay uh bante i think jim has left before, ah, okay. before but hopefully he'll listen to it because uh, uh he'll listen to the recording one thing okay many 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 okay then. so we'll uh, stop for today then okay so today uh and about dhamma this dhamma this suttas like there's a nice uh, uh sutta i just came to my mind now normally you might think now this dhamma dana no buddha said the gift of dhamma accepts all gifts there's nothing more you can do like everyone wants to give alms giving and acquire merit and all that but by dhamma dana you can acquire even more merits precious merits and there is one sutta buddha says uh, now i am teaching the dhamma i am teaching the dhamma i am acquiring merit of dhamma dana but if the person who is listening in your case you if you are listening attentively and uh, you are engaging in this uh, with respect due diligence then you are also acquiring the same merit the merit of dhamma dana that's in the sutta that is why i always tell you to like switch on the cameras and be present and show yourself i think that's a show of respect and it helps you and in no case for you to be more engaged so then you acquire the dhamma dana so together today all of us have acquired that merit so may all these merits be shared with all the devas and the brahmas of the world and may they too uh, increase in heavenly life span beauty power and may they also realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's discourses sadhu 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 and may also this may it shared be shared with all our long lost uh, relatives and may they quickly uh, may they gain happiness in their past lives and may also quickly realize the four noble truths in a future life sadhu 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 and may also these merits be shared with our teacher pingat lokasai nansa most venerable kribad guru jnanananda tero and all the monks of the mahavana buddhist monastic order and may they all realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's discourses sadhu 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 and may also these merits be for all of us and our teachers our parents our loved ones and may they all have the opportunity to acquire more and more it more and more merit in this life and have a good rebirth in the heavenly world and also fully realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu sadhu sadhu